Hello, I'm Dr. Sachin Kulkarni from Fertility Courses and I'm going to just uh, talk to you about this paper which has been recently published in RBM Online by uh, Professor Raul Orvito from Israel. And this paper is uh, telling us about the association of follicular sizes and oocyte development. And it's one of those first studies where they've gone through the follicular sizes, what is the kind of oocytes they obtain, what kind of embryos they developed, and what different, all, and they have used in this all three different triggers like HCG, GNRH agonist, and the dual trigger. Uh, in this study, they have done on all women who were on antagonist protocol. The trigger use was HCG alone or GNRH agonist alone in PCOS patients, and some women also received dual trigger of HCG with GNRH agonist. And the women who received dual trigger were the ones who were little older age, ones with low response, the ones who required larger gonadotrophin doses, and also the ones who had uh, immaturation uh, defects in the previous IVF cycles. Uh, during the course of sonography, they classified the follicles on the day of HCG trigger as uh, small, who are less than 13 millimeter, a medium with 13 to 16 millimeter, and large, who are beyond 16 millimeters. Once they gave the trigger and they did a pickup, in their study, 50% of the women, 50% of the follicles, less than 13 millimeter, gave an egg. 70% of the follicles between 13 to 15 millimeter gave an egg. And in about 76% of the time, beyond 16 millimeter, they got egg. Uh, they obviously got less number of metaphase 2 sites in smaller follicles. But when they compared the fertilization rates, they were equal fertilization and blastosis formation rate from the eggs which are obtained from less than 13, 13 to 15 and the one beyond 16 was the same. So they definitely tell us to en and they encourage us that we should be aspirating the follicles less than 13 also that you never know if you may get some more blastocyst and your cumulative pregnancy rates can be contributed upon. One more vital information this gives that because the kind of triggers they gave. In the study, uh, the normal responders rece received HCG trigger, while GNRH agonist trigger was given to high responders, and dual trigger was given, as I told you earlier, with previous history of low follicle output rate, less mature oocyte number, where more dose of gonadotrophin was given, uh, or somebody who required maybe 16, 17 days of stimulation. And what they concluded, that there was no difference in the triggering modes and oocyte recovery rate with mature oocytes which are obtained, like fertilization rate and the mature oocyte rate was almost the same, and in the all follicle size group. The, the dual trigger group was definitely older, and they were known for their suboptimal response, but in spite of that, uh, the maturation rate and the blastocyst rate was good, and this just suggests that dual trigger could normalize this group to, and get it comparable to those which are normal responders. And the, uh, the embryological outcome, in spite of uh, having a suboptimal response earlier, with the dual trigger could get corrected. So that's a very vital information, I feel. So in conclusion, there are two take-home messages. One is aspirate to follicles who are less than 13 millimeter also. You, you will get some more blastocysts. And secondly, uh, when you're using dual trigger for suboptimal responders, you are literally normalizing them to give you more number of mature oocytes and more embryos. Thank you.